All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the cancellation of Naomi, but also other shows and also some other bits and bobs because this is getting a little bit confusing for those in the fandom. And don't get me wrong, I'm not pretending to be the arbiter of all knowing things with what is going on with the CW and WB and all that good stuff. But what I will offer you today is a little bit of a look into the inner machine workings of what is really going on here so we can try and draw our own conclusions. And since Gotham Knights has now been ordered to series very interestingly, as a result of that, I do recommend you to check out my every Everything we know so far video, which I literally uploaded the day before it got ordered from the pilot to a full series order. So honestly, whether you're looking forward to that show or not, if you just want to know everything about it that we know so far from who's Harvey Dent, is Harvey Dent Two-Face, who is the adopted son of Bruce Wayne, what is going on with the plot and all things like that, again, for better or for worse, that video is available to you. So what's interesting about today's subject, and I include myself in all of this, is that there's a little bit of confusion online about who is to be blame for the cancellations at the CW because obviously with the article I believe it was Deadline maybe it was Variety I can't remember about the overhaul of DC Entertainment the Warner Bros Discovery merger about cleaning house kind of sorting their shit out getting characters up off the ground that have been abandoned both in gaming as well they want to sort that they basically want to sort a lot of things out people are thinking well you know, David Zuslav is coming down hard at the CW and, um, it, you know, some fans are saying, no, it's actually all the CW. And it's just like, okay, well, there's there's been some bobs, as I keep saying, in, in, in between all of this, where I feel like the truth somewhat lies a little bit down the middle somewhere. Things are changing at the CW, things are changing at Warner Brothers Discovery, and, and it's kind of a bit of a morphing space, so today we're diving into that. It's kind of also what I like to look at as, you know, a finger is being pointed this way, and then that person over there is pointing it that way, and then the third person is pointing it back to the original person who was pointing the finger at the second person, and it's kind of a little bit like, eh? So one of the fascinating aspects is the Legends of Tomorrow showrunner, and there's been multiple explanations from various showrunners with little details here and there, and, but the Legends showrunner, first and foremost, says, to further clarify, there's been nothing but love for Legends of Tomorrow from all parties involved. The folks we work with at Belanti, DC, Warner Brothers, and the CW all wanted the show to continue. They were fans and still are. Yet, then now, with the most recent updates, if that was the case and WB didn't have some aspect of involvement in this cancellation and they were on their side and they wanted the shows con to continue and stuff, then why didn't WB renew the, the lease? And that's the primary reason, reportedly, as to why Legends and Batwoman were cancelled. Then, it gets even further and more interesting with Mark Pedowitz, the president of the CW Network. It says right here, Mark Pedowitz wanted to renew Batwoman and Legends of Tomorrow, but Warner Bros. no longer wanted to pay the leases on the studio space. The studio lease was up May 1st, hence why the 29th cancellations went more or less bam smack Boom. So what we're going to do now is dive into the Hollywood Reporter article and I feel like it gives a bit of a larger education into all of the oils, if you will, that oil this larger machine of what's been going on at the CW, the way things work, the way deals work, the way they have made profit off of that and, and just things like that. And I do recommend sitting through this, I'll try read it kind of efficiently, but it just does give you that extra context and I'll mix it in with bits and bobs here and there. My favorite saying in this video, bits and bobs, to kind of get it all wrapped together in a little bit of a present and a bow so you guys can kind of see what's going on for yourself. So, to understand what's happening now at the CW, it's best to look to why the network was launched in the first place. Warners and CBS Studios saw the network as a cash cow. Both studios would supply low-cost scripted series to the network and cash in with lucrative international rights. Then, in 2011, Warners and CBS Studios added revenue from a 1 billion Netflix streaming deal as shows like Plex the Vampire Diaries spin-offs, The Originals, and the unceremoniously cancelled Legacies added a secondary revenue stream. It didn't matter that the CW was never profitable because both studios, then part of Viacom and Time Warner, respectively made money hand over fist via foreign sales and the Netflix output deal. And so then, this is where we get into a bit more of the meat of it, why then did the CW clean house this season? The blame isn't squarely on network CEO Mark Pedowitz. Broadcast's longest tenured network topper reports to a board 
comprised of execs from Warners and CBS Studios, who for years have played a vital role in programming decisions. For example, while Dynasty had the distinction of being broadcast's lowest rated scripted series for years, revenue from the reboot's international sales and the Netflix deal kept it on air for far longer than its linear numbers deserved. So after five seasons of living life on the bubble that included a wild history of casting changes, why did time run out on Dynasty and so many other CW favorites? Well, blame streaming and mergers and the CW's impending sale. And this is what I mean with like, the answer somewhat lies in a little bit of the middle. Despite people saying, no, it's all 100% CW, it's all 100% Warner Brothers Discovery. It's kind of like you swim in the waters in the middle a little bit and there's little bits of grains of truth everywhere. So, they continue to say that Warners and CBS Studios, now overseen by newly merged Warner Bros. Discovery and Paramount Global, ended the Netflix output deal in 2019 to help boost their respective streaming platforms, HBO Max and Paramount Plus. Foreign sales, too, have dried up. Those rights need to stay in-house as both platforms continue their global expansion in a bid to compete with Netflix et al. in the streaming wars. That's a loss of billions of dollars in revenue, making shows like Dynasty, for example, no longer profitable. Without those two revenue streams and amid new corporate ownership, the CW's corporate parents are in active sale talks with Station Group, Nexstar, and other potential buyers. Now, alongside this, Deadline recently reported financial considerations by studios led to the cancellation of several series, which Pedowitz probably would have kept on the air for longer, including Legends of Tomorrow, which deserved a proper send-off after seven seasons, Legacies, which has a devoted fan following, and In the Dark, which has been among the CW's highest quality series, I hear the CW was willing to renew those shows, but the studios behind them were not, for business reasons, as they try keep their slates profitable. And this is where, like, as what I was saying, people were like, oh no, it is all the CW, it's all, you know, it's all the money, and obviously, staying the obvious, this is all money. Like, we don't make these shows for fun, other than the people who work behind it and get paid and do the passionate creativity, but yes, it's all money, but... Like, there's clearly larger parts at work here, and that's why I keep saying swim in the ocean of the middle of all of this stuff going on. Because I disagree with saying it's all 100% the CW. I disagree w technically with also how it's all 100% Warner Bros. Discovery. I think with what Warner Brothers was doing, and with how the thing and the deal and just the CW exists in today's standards and what they're working with, no Netflix deal anymore, no this, this is what it is. They made a decision, Warner Brothers, that maybe had a bit of a knock-on effect, domino effect at the CW where that forced the CW's hand to make a decision to, in order to not renew said shows. So let's maybe get a bit more specifically into that because I probably didn't articulate that so well. So going back to that Legends tweet, which has got a lot of the fans into being like, you know, what's going on, what's going on, okay, but this is going on, but that's going on. With that tweet earlier from the Legends showrunner, perhaps her second tweet in the thread saying, there are forces at play that are out of control of all of the above named entities. It's a hard time for all media makers and and pressures coming from all sides. We all wished for a different outcome. No one wanted this. And I find that interesting because initially in that first tweet, they said, you know, to further clarify, there's been nothing but love for Legends from all parties involved. The folks we work with at Belanti, DC and WB all wanted the show to continue. So with the latest one that I just read out, I feel like maybe it was more them saying like, you know, I'm sure they didn't want this at the end of the day, if you know what I mean, but they did it anyway kind of thing. There's a lot of things at play basically. And ultimately it's a business. And even though I'm sure they didn't want to do this and they were supportive and in a perfect world, they wouldn't want Legends or Batwoman to end, renewing the lease just wasn't really in their best business 
interest. Despite, this is where things get even more interesting, ordering new shiny shows, if you will, such as Gotham Knights, uh, the Supernatural spinoff. On the bottom line there, it just feels like with shows going, because as it's being described, a bit of a red wedding at the CW, there are still new shows coming. Like, as I said, Gotham Knights, as I made that video, talking about the pilot the day before, the day after, bang, ordered to series. I think they're condensing things down and also you know, supplying new, also maybe even cheaper series to order. I say cheaper because this is where we now need to get into the studio space that they didn't want to continue on for the space that Batwoman and Legends utilized. So after reading all of that out, how the machine worked, how it now works, what Warner Brothers are focusing on, the sale. To me, it feels a little bit like those certain shows now at the CW compared to what things were like years ago at the CW just maybe aren't as profitable now. And they're wiping certain shows out that don't meet maybe the modern day mark of what is required. Whereas beforehand in prior years, the CW really didn't need all that much, if anything, to get renewed. And as I keep echoing, I think the truth somewhere lies out there in the middle of this. Again, I do want to stress that what I'm saying in this video, I'm not saying you should believe 100% one thing or the other thing. I'm just delivering you what is being reported out there. Because as I keep mentioning as well, some are saying that if Warner Brothers Discovery were cleaning out shows, they would have just, you know, completely wiped everything on one fell swoop. And I'm just kind of like, no, not really. And now with the literal reports stating that Warner Brothers didn't want to renew the lease, well, to me, that kind of shows a big part of the answer there. I don't think they're necessarily out to, like, wipe every single show out with one fell swoop. You know, we've got Gotham Knights coming, but it's more of a situation of events as they unfolded. They're trying to keep things as lucrative as can be, so to speak, and carrying on a lease for a space that housed Legends and Batwoman just wasn't in their best interest, as I mentioned. For example, you know, for a show that was already multiple seasons in, granted Legends was on season seven, quite a few seasons further along than Batwoman was, when you have at least a studio space that expired May, of May 1st, and you're like, do we want to carry this on for a show that's already been going this amount of time, Batwoman, especially with current day standards, you know, we don't have the Netflix, we don't have this, we don't have that anymore. It's like, as much as we would kind of like to keep that going, we don't want to spend X amount of money for the condition of how many years, how much time do we need to sign on the dotted line for this new lease? Like, will we utilize this space for Legends? Should we? Should we even do it for future shows? And they were kind of like, at the end of the day, let's not. And that all comes in with what we were talking about earlier with how the Hollywood Reporter said that they're trying to keep things as profitable on the bottom line as they can, I guess. With that very line earlier of saying Warners and CBS Studios, now overseen by the newly merged Warner Bros. Discovery and Paramount Global, ended the Netflix output deal in 2019 to help boost their respective streaming platforms, HBO Max and Paramount. Foreign sales too have dried up. Those rights need to stay in house as both platforms continue their global expansion in a bid to complete with Netflix in the streaming wars, you know, and other other streamers. So I guess, again, imagine if you're signing a new deal, oh, Legend's been going for seven seasons, doesn't do spectacularly anyway. Again, the CW didn't used to care so much about ratings or like the parent um, studios, so to speak, but now it's a little bit different when certain things have dried up, the Netflix deal has ended. It's kind of like, oh, do we really want to renew this lease for X amount of more time, however long they have to renew that lease for per the conditions? No. Again, it sucks. Again, it deserved more. Again, even if six more episodes to close the season. But money, I guess. Now, my best guess with all of this being discussed now, and again, I may not be spot on with this, but as for Naomi, I just think that when it comes to the modern day mark, as I keep saying, with the conditions that used to be in the CW years ago, like why certain ratings didn't really matter and keep getting renewed because they could. It, you know, they had the Netflix deal, the international distribution and things like that. That is now being said to be dried up a little bit. Well, the modern day mark, as the Hollywood Reporter, certain shows in years prior were on air for far longer than they deserved. And when they say deserved, by the way, they don't mean it in how you're personally feeling about it. Oh, you know, this show deserves more. The actors and the cast are amazing. They just mean reflective of the statistics, so to speak, it got before that would have usually have ended a lot sooner. It was okay in those years due to the revenue they got from various other places. But now it's not as much 
apparently a, a thing anymore. Again, to repeat what they said directly, revenue from the reboot's international sales and the Netflix deal kept it on air for far longer than its linear numbers deserve. So perhaps the Naomi viewers, or you know, the audience who tuned in to Naomi dropping by around, I believe, 40 plus percent for a brand new CW season isn't really good enough for them anymore with the way that everything is now set up with the modern day mark, so to speak, with how the current machine is operating. And again, going back to what a lot of people are saying, money. Yes, obviously, money. It's kind of stating the obvious. Well, of course it's money, because <laughs> as with any of this, no matter how much you love shows and the creatives behind them are passionate or whatever, it's a business. And that's why I feel like what Warner Brothers made with that decision uh, with regards to not renewing the studio space, the lease, that had a domino effect because it wasn't in their best interest. Then the CW would have kind of liked to keep it going, but the CW made a decision to not do X or Y with renewing uh, Batwoman and Legends of Tomorrow because of that knock-on effect. And then, you know, the rest is history, I suppose. Or at least that's how it's being presented right now. I mean, how else am I supposed to read it when you're getting literal reports from the Hollywood Reporter deadline saying, Mark Pedowitz wanted to keep it going. The CW president's like, he wanted to keep it going. Warner Brothers literally did not want to renew the lease. That has a knock-on effect. Cancelled the shows. Yeah, sure, we'll bring in Gotham Knights, you know, filming somewhere else, blah, blah, blah. It just kind of seems kind of transparent here, but, you know, there are certain contradicting things, which is why there's a little bit of confusion with what exactly is going on here. And with regards to other shows, well, I guess we're going to hear more at the CW upfronts. Like, I'm predicting just kind of what has been rumored from the Hollywood Report for quite a while, something that I think is somewhat overdue in my opinion. Fair enough if you feel differently, if you love this show, but The Flash will probably be ending in season 9 with an abbreviated final season. No news on Stargirl though, I'm guessing we'll get some information there about it, but it hasn't even had season 3 yet, so I feel like it's really kind of cruel to like, if they did any kind of cancellation with that, it's like we haven't even aired the season yet, at least wait till the audience comes in uh, before you mention anything about ending it with season 3. Uh, I, I, I would have to think it would get a season 4 order because I doubt they filmed season 3 with any kind of closure in mind, but again, Look at what happens with Legends, but that was a bit more as with what we were getting into down to the Mark Pedowitz, CW president, wanted it to carry on, but because of the lease, didn't seem to happen. But I'm going to shut up now. I've been rambling for ages. I just kind of wanted to dish the most modern reports out there, what people are saying, what people are feeling. How do you feel about this? Do you think there is maybe one finger pointed at someone else who is more to blame than others? Do you think that it is a mixed bag that, yeah, the, the people, the studios above, did have an impact through not renewing the lease, which forced the CW's hand to be like, oh, well, we can't really, you know, you know, film that show there anymore. Maybe we can't really, we don't really want to move it to this place to film there because that doesn't work with maybe Gotham Knights coming in, whatever's going on there. So it's just like we have to, money, money, money is at the end of the day, it's a business. I'm sorry, we have to cancel it. Do you think it's all of that in one mixed bag? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Let me know your predictions as well. Do you think at the CW Upfronts there's going to be even more stuff? I think a lot of the axing has been done now. Just a bit of a bonus video today. I wasn't really going to talk about this, but then I thought, hey, I can ramble about it. A couple of interesting articles, a couple of interesting comments being made. But again, I said I was going to shut up, so I'm going to shut up. So like the video if you did enjoy it. If you want to see more videos like this, bonus videos, news, reviews, and kind of breakdowns on bits and bobs out there in the comic book world, this is the place for you to subscribe. I do recommend it. But thank you so much for watching. Hope you all have a lovely rest of your day, and I'll see you people of the DC Universe in the next video. Goodbye.